Welcome to the house of the Lord, everybody. We got a good starting crowd in here. It'll be about twice as big in about five minutes. Just get ready to make room. I hope you came ready to worship the Lord this morning, because we sure did. Lord, we welcome you into this house. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. Lord, we've come to please your heart. We are here for you.
seeing your love for us, Lord, we give you glory. Looking back to the day you redeemed us and looking forward to the day you're going to return for us, Lord, we give you glory. There's none other who's worthy.
Lord. Oh, Lord, never let us forget that. Never let us forget what you redeemed us from. I don't rehearse it in my mind, but Lord, I remember it. I remember the things that had their teeth in me so hard. The cross of Jesus Christ really is the reason I'm alive. That's not just words on a screen, folks. That's me living up here. I know what was dragging me down. Oh, but the grace that pulled me back up. The grace that pulled those claws out of me one at a time and set my feet on a rock. Ah. Lord, overwhelm us with the reality of your mercy this morning so we can be thankful and grateful for what it is you've done for us. Never take it for granted. You stood before creation, eternity in your hands. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You were in his plans even at the beginning. You stood before my failures And you carried the cross for my sins My sin weighed upon your shoulders My soul now to stand Lord, I do not understand that verse So what can I say?
clap of praise this morning. Good looking crowd here. We've had a powerful first service. As we pray this morning, our pastor preached the house down, but he's doing it under a very heavy load. His niece has passed away, and his brother also has passed away. This is Mike's dad. And so their family has taken a double hit this week. But uh, I don't think you'll be able to tell it when he preaches because he preached the house down. But we want to remember them today. God will touch them. And that God will touch his body as well. Most of the time you notice that he comes out here a little later and he sits a lot. He has severe back problems. But he labors just like he's, uh, well, how old is he, 60, 70? He labors like a man who's 66. And so... <laughs> But uh, the work has to go on. Life doesn't stop. As we go to prayer this morning, let's lift all of these needs to the Lord as well as any needs that you may have as well. Father, we love you today. We thank you because you've spared us for another day. We're not here by accident. There's a reason we're still alive on this side of heaven. And Lord, we ask this morning that the great comfort of the Holy Spirit will be present for the Reiners and for all of their family, extended family, as they're dealing with not only one death, but two in their family, and be their comfort and their stay today. Touch our pastor's body, touch his back, and make him whole by your power, we pray, and anoint him again just as powerfully or more so than you did in that first service today. Let lives be touched and changed for the glory of God, we ask. And Lord, when this service is over, when the last light is turned off, the last door is locked, and the last car leaves the building, may they leave here saying, it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord today. And we'll thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning such sunshiny faces today. As some of you already know, I'm the new girls ministry coordinator and the children, thank you, thank you very much, but God. <laughs> the children had an opportunity to vote on what they wanted their missions giving project to be for September and they chose Hillcrest Family, I'm sorry, Children's Home, Hillcrest Children's Home in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And they uh, provide pillows, flashlights, Bibles, sensory toys for special needs and autistic children, birthday cards. Um, all of the children live in cabins with house parents. So it's a great, great outreach for children that might be unsafe in other situations or might not have a home at all. And they do provide that. And, of course, they bring them up in... Christian atmosphere. So it's a very good program. There are flyers like this outside on the information booth and on the sign up table, if you will. Um, and we're going to be showing a short video 
appreciate your time. The kids want to thank you in advance for your giving, our students and the children in the home. Um, if you have the desire to write a check, make it out to Maranatha family and just put in the memo Hillcrest or coins for kids. If you want to do cash, write on the outside of the tithe envelope what it's for. Again, Hillcrest or coins for kids. Thank you so much for your time and for your dedication to mission-minded children. And I also want to let y'all know that uh, we set a goal on Wednesday nights in September of a $400 missions giving, and they raised $444.15. Yes, they worked hard. All of that will go to the children's program, and whatever you donate today will also go there. And because they reached the $400, they get to throw water balloons at Miss Kelly this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So be here for the 7 p.m. service and a little fun outside. Thanks again for your heart. I'm just a regular girl. I have a mom, a dad, a brother, and a dog named Huxley. Sometimes I forget that not everyone's like me. There are so many kids out there that don't live in a nice home or have a family that loves them. I've even heard that some kids don't have toys or a bed to call their own at night. Some of these special kids go through very hard times. They face big issues that make them feel scared, sad, and even hurt. Even simple things like having a toothbrush, clean clothes, and plenty of food to eat is difficult for them. Thanks, Mom. These kids need someone to care for them and love them. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about a place that I recently learned about, Hillcrest Children's Home. They do amazing things to help kids who need it the most. Hillcrest Children's Home is a beautiful place in Hot Springs, Arkansas that provides homes and family-style living for kids who need help in their life. Their amazing leaders and staff are there to meet the needs of each child. I recently met someone that grew up at Hillcrest and I want you to meet her too. Growing up here, it's, um, it's special because the house parents and the staff could be home with, you know, their family, but they decide to, you know, choose us. You know, as a kid, that's something that you want to have a great support system. Isn't that amazing? Now it's our turn to help. By giving to missions through Coins for Kids, we can help girls like Savannah and many more grow up in a happy and healthy place. The leader of Hillcrest, Mr. Jay Mooney, says that the leaders of Hillcrest are there to show the love of Jesus to these kids when they need it the most. That's right, Taylor. This is my new friend, Jay Mooney. Your gifts to Coins for Kids is making a huge difference for children. This ministry, it started with just a dime. God will take your dollars and he will multiply them. Nothing is impossible with God. Never underestimate what your gift to this ministry will do to redeem vulnerable children and hurting children because God is able to do far more abundantly than we could ever ask or imagine. Kelly, I was going to let you know that, of course, I'll be here to help throw balloons at you, but Pastor and I have come to an agreement that if you can raise five million by Wednesday night, they can throw balloons at his wife. <laughs> I used to tell the kids where I pastored, some of these guys do anything to raise attendance. They stand on the roof and preach, I'd fall off and break my neck. Or they would shoot the pastor with Kool-Aid. I said, the kid that shoots me with Kool-Aid better be able to outrun me. <laughs> I don't say that anymore because they could walk and catch me now. So it's not quite as much of a challenge for them. Ushers are coming now to receive our Sunday morning tithe, missions, and offerings. I think it's tremendous what these kids have done. And we look forward to them having even greater experiences in the days ahead. Father, bless our giving. Meet every need in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, Maranatha family and guests. Thank you so much for joining us today for worship. Let's open up our church center apps or calendars and see what's happening. Ladies, today is the last day to order Rada cutlery. 
For a link to our fundraiser on their online store or for a catalog, see Teresa Ryan. The Youth One Conference will be held November 19th and 20th. The cost of registration is $45 per team and is due today. If you don't get it in today, the cost goes up. So get it in early and get that price break. See Pastor Casey for details. This Saturday, October 9th, is our next Superglued Get Together for Young Married Couples. If that sounds like you, please mark it on your calendar and sign up in the foyer. Child care is provided for a donation, and please bring some food to share with everyone. We'll see you there. Join us on October 31st for our Fall Family Night. We will be having a trunk or treat, inflatables, a hayride, and a family photo booth. We'll be having costume contests for different ages and a chili cook-off with prizes to be awarded to the winners. If you're able to decorate your trunk for the kids or want to enter the chili cook-off, please make sure you sign up at the information table in the foyer. November 14th is our 50th anniversary service here at Maranatha. This will be a great day of celebration, and we want you to be here. Please mark it on your calendars. Well, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of ways to be involved and become part of our church family. We encourage you to open up your app, take a look at these events, and try to attend some of them. Our calendars can get full very quickly, but time we spend together is always worth it. So come, bring your family, and be a part of what's going on. That's it for now. Have a fantastic Sunday. And are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing And you're desperate for some healing Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way where there ain't no way
cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilt. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. There ain't no sinner that He can't save. Let me tell. they're good I don't I'd rather hear them sing than anybody I know of hallelujah I'm preaching a sermon this morning that I have preached before in the first service no I preached it before and I told them in the first service I wasn't preaching it for them I was preaching it for me now you welcome to listen in but I just need to be reminded. In a week that has been difficult for us, to say the least, last Sunday, after church, I went home, opened my phone to video, and FaceTimed my sister her granddaughters, some others in the room as they took the final <laughs> took the final wires loose. And my niece slipped off into glory. They wanted me to pray with her, FaceTime. And then I sit in a meeting on Monday night and Tuesday night where a group of pastors and churches and businessmen raised just short, $35,000 short of a million dollars for one of the greatest compassion ministries that we as a church and as the denomination support Convoy of Hope, feeds thousands of kids, transformed women to be empowered, trained farmers how to grow their own crops, provide water, girls' ministries. So I go from here to here, and then I come home on Thursday, in the wee hours of the morning, Mike's dad and my brother so this week's kind of been like a, a roller coaster for us, and so I came down to my office on Thursday after I'd been out and take care of him and some other stuff. I came into my office and I sat down and I was kind of beat. And I said, Lord, I need something. I need something not only to preach, but I need something for me. And I was reminded of a sermon that I preached years ago. It's found in the 19th chapter of the Revelation. And I don't normally read a lengthy text, but I want to read this one. John writes in Revelation 19, 
And after these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. And again, they said, Hallelujah. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And then a voice came from heaven saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, listen to this, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. <laughs> the message today is that one simple verse. Hallelujah. The Lord God omnipotent reigns. In the light of all that has taken place the last few weeks, and I learn and I know without a doubt I'm not the only one that's had difficult weeks and months in the last years. We have faced some of the most difficult times in our life. We have battled against what appears to be almost every avenue of attack. But I say with John, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. In the light of all the things that have happened in our nation and in our world, earthquakes, famine, wars, the economy, the housing market, stock trading scandals, scandals in our government, the COVID and the pandemic, you name it. It seems to have been in our news lately. I just dropped by this morning to tell you that God still has this world in the palm of his hand. There hasn't one thing caught him by surprise, and I scream it in the face of all the adversity that we face this morning. Hallelujah! The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. I want to share with you this morning three things that I hope uh, that I trust will give you hope and security in all of this because we're all facing it. Sister Nam's nephew lost both a wife and a stepson in less than a week's time. So I understand. I'm not the only one. We're all going through this thing. But I want to share with you these things, things this morning. The new unique theme of this proclamation, the universal testimony of his power, and the ultimate tribute to his person. Number one, the unique theme of this proclamation, he reigns. That's, that's the message of the hour. He reigns. No matter what, nothing stops that. Look at the timing of this proclamation. It, it is fantastic. John said, after these things, and after these things, it looked like to John there was no after. 
If you look at chapters 11 and 12 and 13, you, you've got the blood, you've got the terror, the horrible holocaust, you've got the revelation of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, the torture, the hunger, the devastation, blood to the horse's bridles. The sun is burning and blistering and baking. It, it almost seems as if nature has gone into a convulsion. The world is at turmoil. It looks like the night will never end. This is a horrific time. And right in the middle of that, there seems to be no end to the turmoil. But all of a sudden, you hear the prophet say, and after these things. And I want to tell you this morning, my friend, there is always a blessed after for the child of God. After the night, after the weeping, after the struggles. Remember that the storm will not blow forever in your life. John shouts, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. This is not just whistling in the dark. This has got something behind it. This is a faith in the promises of God. After the weeping comes the joy. After the sowing comes the harvest. After the groaning comes the laughter. There is a blessed after for the child of God in this devastated world. So I speak to you that are going through it just like we have this week. I say to you, raise your head up. Look up for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. I'll be the first to tell you, headlines are black. They're about as bleak as anything we can imagine. John talks about the thunders, the waters, all of that. But he said all of it is repeating. The multitudes are repeating one theme. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. We often ask, will it ever end? When I called my sister who had lost her only daughter, her only child, on Sunday night, Monday morning, early. And I called her on Thursday, and I said to her, sweetie, our brother is gone. I could hear the pain in her voice. And she said to me, can we take any more? There was devastation. There was hurt. There was pain. I couldn't do anything to console her but cry with her. It was terrible. We often ask, will this night ever end? Will this time ever go away? But can I tell you, in the face of defeat, we talk victory. In the face of weakness, we talk strength. In the face of sickness, we talk healing. In the face of the valley, we talk about the mountaintops. Because when it's all said and done, I hear a voice out of heaven heaven saying hallelujah the Lord God omnipotent reigneth I know you're going through it I know that you've had a time but look back for a moment look back at your your darkest moment in your life and the very fact that you're sitting here this morning is a testimony that speaks to his great power of bringing you through the fire. The very fact I'm standing here, somebody said, are you gonna preach? I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna preach. I got something to say. I wanna shake my fist in the devil's face. I want him to hear me say, throw at me all you can. But I'm gonna tell you this morning, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Oh, it's devastating. But the very fact that we're here teaches us that God still reigns. The very fact that we're sitting here this morning, having come through the darkness, having come through the fire, having come through the flood, is a testimony to his great power. Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. You've come through it. You've 
tried it all. And today, look where you are. You're still here. You're still trusting God. You're still serving Him today. All because you understand the unique theme of God is that He still reigns. What's it saying? Your testimony is sitting here this morning saying to a devil, you've tried to destroy me. You've tried to take me down. You've tried to put me under, but I'm still here. Why? Because omnipotent God still reigns. And in your darkest moment, when you don't know what you're going to be able to take next, when she says to me, what else can we take? I hear the voice of the Heavenly saying, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. That's what I bank on this morning. Some people ask me if if God speaks with an audible voice and I say, oh no, he's louder than that. He's louder than that. And his word says to us today, now faith. You need a little bit of now faith in your own faith, in your own moment, in your own now to sound out with the voice of all those that are above us. Hallelujah. In the middle of my darkness and our pain and the devastation that follows me. Hallelujah. The Lord God omnipotent reigns. But listen to the universal testimony of his power. We know that he reigns and that he reigns over everything. Oh, but pastor, we've had this, or pastor, this has happened in our life. I understand that, but he still reigns. You can't take that away from him. The devil will never be able to win. He knows this morning that all he has is what he can do to us now because he knows there's an after. And after that, I heard a voice of great many people in water say, Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Do you remember in the book of John, it's different than the other four gospels, other three gospels. And you see Jesus coming to a wedding, it's early in his ministry. When he steps into that wedding, they have an embarrassing situation. The wine has has run out. And so Mary says to those servants there, go and talk to my son. And whatever he says to do, do it. That's a good sermon right there. Whatever he says to do, do it. And so they come to Jesus and they say, we don't have any more wine. We don't know what we're going to do. And Jesus, well, he has some things to say, but then he says, go fill the water pots. And there's a number of water pots there and they're tall and they're big and they go and they fill them. Mary had said, whatever he says, do it. And they go and fill those water pots. And when they bring them back into the wedding, he said, now give them to the guest. And all of a sudden, guests begin to drink. And something unusual happened. Because it's always that they have the best wine first. And then last, they serve the worst. Because all of them's already taste buds are dull or whatever. But in this case, as they sip on that wine, it's different. It's new. It's flavorful. It's better than the last. And what Jesus did at Cana of Galilee, he's going to do in our everyday lives. He's going to give the best to us. He has saved the best for us for last. You see? in the book of of John John uses the word miracle but it's different than that of Mark, Matthew, Mark and and Luke you see they all talk about miracle and they do it in the terms of compassion and concern and care but John uses a different word, he uses a Greek word that doesn't mean miracle like the ones you've read in the other gospels, this word is different it means sign so what John is saying is that whatever you see 
done in Jesus' ministry in John. It is a sign for those things to come. And he's saying to all of us, just hold on. Just wait a minute. The best is coming. Can I tell you, we're seeing a revival in the land. You're saying, oh, pastor, everything's devastating. I understand that. But I listened to a, one of my missionary friends at three o'clock in, in the morning in his time in, in, in the Middle East. I'll just say that. He tells us of reports of, of hundreds of thousands of Muslims coming to Christ. He tells us about m rooms that are started with just three or four people in them. That's all they'll allow in it. And they're having people come to Christ. Can I tell you, he told me that they had hoped to have a thousand. They were just, uh, just elated that they would have thousand. But now he's telling me we've got 10,000 of these around. Maybe more than that. We don't know of all of them. Hundreds of thousands, even a million of Muslims have come to know Christ. Can I tell you what the devil wants to destroy? God said, just hang in there for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Somebody's devastated because we've had 56 martyrs. But I'm here to tell you their blood has brought about the salvation of thousands, even hundreds of thousands to know Christ. Oh, listen, church. You listen to Matthew and Mark and Luke, and they talk about miracles, but all of their miracles refer mainly to concern and care and, and, and uh, compassion for others. But John speaks of life-changing miracles, a sign. What is that sign, Pastor? Well, I watch as Jesus comes to the tomb of his friend Lazarus. And scripture tells us that he wept. But even in his voice, there is a hope of tomorrow. And Jesus walks to that tomb and he shouts, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, Lazarus comes walking out of that tomb and, and death clothes, and he comes in and, and Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And it's a sign. It's a sign because the same thing that happened at Lazarus' tomb is gonna happen 10,000 times 10,000 times 10,000 as Jesus speaks and the Bible said, the earth will give up the dead and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them together to meet the Lord in the air. Can I tell you, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Death doesn't reign. Funerals doesn't reign. Standing at a graveside doesn't reign. He reigns. Watch the leper as he approaches Jesus. Most say, oh no, don't come close. Stand back, you're a leper, not Jesus. He walks right up to him. You know why? Because the leper, Jesus doesn't contract the leprosy. The leprosy contracts the healing of Jesus. And he walks away healed and free, and, and free from that. Why? Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And the prophecy is, that when we come in contact with Jesus, he changes us and we contract the eternal life of him. The Lord gave me one day as I was riding, he gave me, I stopped on the side of the road and I wrote this in one of my Bibles and it said, Jesus has destroyed everything that is not of him. Do you hear me? He turned death into life, sickness into healing, lack into plenty, sin into salvation, weakness into strength. Oh, church, let me tell tell you something today. It may be going all around us. Things may be falling apart. All this pandemic may be here, but I want to shout it. Shout it in the face of my sister's daughter's funeral. Shout it in the face of my brother's funeral. Shout it in the midst of death. Jesus is still God and he's reigning forever and ever and ever. I was on the Sea of Galilee some 
years ago, many years, almost more than I can remember. And I read in Scripture while I stood there looking over that vast body of water. And it used to be that that thing could turn violent and in a moment's time go to raging winds blowing, rain, kind of flashes of lightning, all of that. And yet Jesus stood on it one day and said, hey, you shut up and be still. That's exactly what he said in the Greek. Shut up and be still. And it silenced down. Can I tell you, that's the blessed after. After all we've gone through, after everything that's happened lately, and it seems like devastation is all on us, Jesus said, shut up, be still. And the waters cried out, and the thunder screamed, and the voices wailed, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Oh, listen, when Jesus speaks to Lazarus, in his weeping, he knows there is a hope of tomorrow, even in his voice. And what happened at Bethany is going to happen multiplied thousands and tens of thousands of times. And Jesus is going to say, every grave, listen to me. I want you to know the Lord God Almighty reigneth. Third thing, the ultimate tribute to his person. This is not some weak need. Politician. This is the God of the universe. This is the world ascribing to him the greatness. Hallelujah. The Lord God reigns. He reigns. Not politicians, not a government. Not a world system, not the educational system, nothing. He reigns. He puts up and takes down. He's got it all. I am not the least bit worried. Pastor, aren't you devastated? No, I'm not because I know he reigns. And whatever he chooses to happen is going to happen. I may not understand it, but I know one thing. He reigns. I may not understand death and devastation, but I understand my God. I know him, and I know whatever happens, happens for my good because I am called according to his purpose. I don't understand it. I don't know why Margie died, but I love God, and I trust him. I've thrown my hands up and say I don't understand healing, but I understand a God. I understand a God that says, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent. He alone, that word omnipotent, he alone works it all out. Nobody has to challenge him. Nobody can change him. Nobody redirects him. He reigns. In the middle of false doctrines, in the middle of apathy, in the middle of troubles and problems in the church and in the government, He's still going to reign. Hollywood can make fun of him. They're trying to make people believe that he's less than deity. And they're fighting against him. But can I tell you something this morning, church? He still reigns. I haven't found anybody that's been able to dethrone him. I haven't found anybody able to push him off. He still reigns. Oh, but. No, there is no but. He reigns. I don't care what the devil does. I don't care what the world does. I don't care what things look like to our eyes. The thing we have to focus on is what John said. After, after the blood, after the uh, blood to the horse's bridle, after the war, after the devastation, after the sun, after all of that, he reigns because that's the promise that we have to his person. He still reigns. In a wicked and a perverse nation, he still reigns. He still reigns. And can I tell you, church, that one day every tongue will confess 
and every knee will bow. One day the flag of Emmanuel will fly over every city, every county, every state, every country, every nation. It'll say, hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. No more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, no more devastation, no more dying. He will reign forever and forever and forever and forever and forevers of ever. He will reign. Oh, but pastor, you're suffering today. Oh, no. He's got it all in his hand. He's still God. I sing it out with John and those in the revelation. I say it to the devastation and the darkness and the sustain of all that's going on. Hallelujah. The Lord God omnipotent reigns. Oh, but you don't know what I'm going through, but he does. You don't know what I'm suffering with, he does. And he walks with us, and he talks with us, and he shows us the way. Your life may be in devastation this morning. You may be sitting here saying, well, I don't know what to do. I'm just really lost. I, I'm telling you, I don't know this or that or the other, and I hear so many people in turmoil and confusion. Can I remind you that our God reigns? Songwriter said it best. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. You know what that song is saying? Let everything fall at his feet. Let every disease fall at his feet. Let every sickness, every pain. Can I tell you, every disease knows his name. We may not always know it. They know he defeated it. They know who's boss. We may not. But everything else does. All creation, all heaven and earth, everything knows this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth all by himself. He doesn't need my help. He hadn't called me up and asked for me to help him at all. I don't understand that, but he hadn't. He reigns. Hallelujah. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Donnie, come. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what your pain threshold is. I can tell you mine's been pushed to the limit. I lay awake 3 o'clock in the morning thinking, wondering. But I said to the Lord the other night, Hallelujah, you reign. Nobody else gets that distinction. Nobody else gets to be boss. Nobody else going to tell me anything. Death, where is your sting? Oh, listen, where is your victory? God is the victor this morning. Stand and sing this with us. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall.
he sings that again. I want you to, if you're in this place and you're just, you've had it, you're up to here with what all's going on. And you say, I just need some help this morning. I just need somebody to pray for me. I want you to step out. Boy, don't you hesitate. And you come to this altar and stand right here. And we're going to have prayer for you today because our God reigns. There's nobody going to take his place. He is absolutely the omnipotent God that reigns in our midst. If you're here today and you want prayer, step out real quick. Come on. And we're going to sing it one more time, Brother Donnie. Power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the loyal diadem and crown him. Crown him. That's up to you. That's up to you. You put the crown on him. Let him be Lord of your life. some over there and some here would you fill in with me and help pray for those that are up here today that God wants us to reach out and touch the needs of those that are here today I want you to know you have the right to say to the devil my Lord omnipotent reigns you don't have authority in my life God has authority in my life and we're going to reach out to him right now would you help us pray right now pray together heavenly Father. I thank you that no matter what the storm, you're still God. No matter what the devastation, you're still the 